Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from round 5 of the Gashima Memorial. We said that we will cover at least one more game uh, and even though the title says Navara vs Navara, don't worry, it's not a typo. There is a very good reason for that which will be explained uh, during the video. Uh, but it's in fact David Navara with the white pieces facing Ding Liren. Uh, and without further ado, let's check it out. It's uh, well, it's a crazy game, but what else can you expect when 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 Ding, Ding is playing? Uh, so Navara opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, knight to f3, d5, uh, c4, and e6. We have the queen's gambit declined on the board. Uh, knight to c3. Uh, we have c6 uh, transposing into the semi-slav. We have e3. Uh, knight b to d7, bishop to d3, and here d captures on c4. Of course, as usual, black waits for white to develop the light square bishop, and only then captures on c4, forcing white to waste the tempo. We have bishop captures on c4, and now b5, the Miran variation. Uh, bishop goes back to d3, and now just a6, uh, consolidating that very nice pawn structure on the queen side. Uh, we have e4 by white, and here c5, a very, very sharp line. Uh, where Ding continue, uh, no, sorry, Navarra continues e5, and Ding goes c captures on d4, uh, and here Knight captures on b5. This is the Blumenfeld variation. Uh, extremely sharp line. A captures on b4, and now Pawn captures on f6. G captures on f6, uh, and now we have castles. And here comes the reason why I, the title says it's Navarra versus Navarra. Uh, here, after Queen to b6. Uh, we have queen to e2 by white, and now comes uh, b4 by black. And it's um, uh, this is the position Navarra had last year in 2018 uh, against Lyubomir Vtachnik, um, and Navarra had the, the black pieces here. So here, uh, Ding Liren is using the same line uh, Navarra used in 2018 to defeat his opponent with the black pieces. But here, uh, it seems that uh, uh, Navarra analyzed his game, and here, uh, Navarra's opponent went rook to d1. But here... Uh, it's actually uh, Navarra who deviates from the line. He goes bishop to f4. And now, okay, it's not a new move. It has been played before, but uh, it's interesting because uh, Ding is the one who chooses the defense. Uh, after after all d4 was played, he chose uh, most likely to play uh, in the spirit of that game. Navarra won with the black pieces. Uh, but now uh, Navarra forces him to, uh, to to find a different approach. Uh, but okay, we have h5 by Ding, uh, and now comes rook f to c1. So the rook is not being developed to d1. This is an improvement Navarra found uh, over over Lubomir Vtachnik. Uh, rather, he chooses to develop the rook over to c1. And already you can see that uh, there are uh, a lot of interesting ideas. If you can play rook to c7, bring the other rook to c1, uh, it can be just an amazing uh, c file for, for the white rooks. So here, uh, Ding closes it with bishop to c5, not allowing any rook or, or bishop to c7 idea for that matter. Uh, and here there is one game where knight to d2 was played going after the bishop on, uh, on c5, uh, but here we have a4. Again, it's Navarra who deviates and uh, it, it is as of this moment move 17 that we have a completely new game. So uh, it's the queen's gambit declined. A lot, a lot of games and a lot of variations are possible here, so of course we will not have a new game from move 10, but rather from move 17. Uh, but okay, uh, Dingo's B captures on a3, Ampassan, B captures on a3, and now Bishop to a6. A nice developing move, uh, offering uh, a, a lot of trades. We have Rook a to b1, attacking Ding's Queen on b6, and here we go into a lot of crazy trades. Bishop captures on d3, we have Queen captures on d3, and now... Uh, here's uh, uh, here's most likely the moment where Ding should have gone queen to c6, but rather uh, he goes uh, rook captures on a3. Uh, we have queen captures on a3, grabbing the rook. Bishop captures on a3, grabbing the queen. Uh, now comes rook captures on b6, and here we have bishop captures on c1. Uh, so here Navarro here, what do you play here with the white pieces? Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds, uh, you know, just uh, try and figure out what to play here. For those of you who played bishop captures uh, on c1, you would lose the rook on b6, uh, black would be out of the exchange here and would have a winning game. Uh, here, perhaps uh, perhaps a move Ding missed uh, because he didn't uh, play that queen to c6 move, uh, but uh, you know perhaps he saw it and he decided that it's, uh, it's well worth it. Uh, but here we have rook to c6 by Navarra, getting the rook out of harm's way, and now there's a double attack against the bishop on c1. And of course, if you capture the bishop on f4, then rook to c8 picks up the rook on h8 as the rook on h8 is undefended. 
uh, but as you cannot prevent both threats here, it's actually Ding who has to give up the exchange. We have bishop captures, rook to c8 check, king to e7, and now Ding loses the rook on h8. Uh, but uh, this is why I said that uh, maybe he even saw everything and he just plays d3. So uh, he's down the exchange, but he has a very strong pass to d pawn. So let's see, let's see how the game went. Uh, Navarra played king to f1. Uh, and as, as there's no way of uh, defending the h5 pawn, uh, Ding just brings the knight into the game. Uh, we have knight to c5, and now rook captures on h5, threatening the knight on c5, knight to e4, uh, preparing to push the pawn all the way. Uh, and here, uh, Navarra calculates precisely. He plays rook to h4. And it's very interesting. Uh, here, uh, Ding actually wins, uh, <laughs> wins the knight. Uh, we have... Uh, e5 first, defending the bishop here, and now comes g3. This is the move Navarra had to find with d2, uh, threatening, of course, uh, d1 with a promotion to the queen. Knight captures on d2 with knight captures on d2 with check. If you ever move the bishop, you're going to lose this knight. Uh, knight captures with check, king to e2, and now comes bishop to g5. Uh, with an attack against the, the rook, and also the knight is still protected. Uh, rook to b4 by Navarra, and now, uh, again, a very interesting position where the bishop is uh, defending the knight, but um, uh, you don't really you don't really have a good way of saving it, because, yes, for the moment the bishop is defending it, but after f4 comes, uh, well, the bishop will no longer be defending it, and uh, white, uh, white will just grab the knight and will be... Uh, uh, having a, a better endgame being uh, of the exchange. So here Ding played, uh, uh, most likely he just, uh, he had to go with the king. King to d6, just uh, start marching his king forward. Uh, but here he played e4, and e4 uh, just blunders a pawn. Now, it's very interesting how e4 blunders a pawn. Uh, I will give you a couple of seconds, as it's really an, um, uh, an instructional or educational, if you would say, uh, endgame where, uh, you know, you're up the exchange, but you still have to play very precise to win this. So, uh, what do you play here with white? Again, I'll give you a couple of seconds, as it's a very nice position. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent endgame player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, rook to d4. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the idea. Uh, there's a double attack against the knight on d2. If you move the knight, you lose the e4 pawn. Uh, if you don't do it, let's say you play something else. Uh, for example, you could try king to e6 or f5, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. King e6, now white plays rook captures. And this is the point. Bishop captures, king captures, and the pawn endgame is winning for white. And it's not, uh, and it's not all that difficult of an endgame. Let's say king e5, king e3, you could go f5, then comes h4. Now, you don't really have a lot of useful moves here. You have to go back, king f6, king f4, king g6, and now you're going to go king e5, and after f6, let's say king f4, and black has no more moves as the pawns are doubled. You would have to move away from the pawns, then the white king will just gobble all of them up. Uh, so, here, Ding realizes that he he doesn't have the, the luxury of going into a king and pawn endgame. Uh, he decides to give up the e4 pawn. So, we have knight to b3. Uh, rook captures with check, king to d6, and now h4, pushing the bishop back. Uh, we have bishop to h6, and now even h5, creating a very nice pass pawn, which is on a light square. Uh, king to d7, uh, going back, and now rook to b4, attacking the knight. And here, again, uh, knight to c5 seems like uh, the safe choice, but uh, it seems that Ding, uh, Ding is still trying to win this position. And yes, you do have a bishop and a knight against the rook, which is usually enough for a win. Uh, but uh, you are down a pawn, but it's not just that you're down a pawn, you are down, it's like you're down two pawns because your uh, f pawn is doubled. So here, Ding goes uh, knight to c1 check, we have king to f3, and now king to e6. And uh, here, it, uh, <laughs> there's a problem. Uh, we have rook to b6 check by Navarra, king to f5, and now uh, rook to b5 check. And uh, now you have to move and allow the white king to approach. We have king back to e6, now comes king to e4. And here you're just going to check the king, you're going to approach uh, these pawns, you're going to gobble all of them up, and then you're going to have a monster pawn storm on the king side, and the white's, uh, well... Uh, extra knight will will be uh, of little worth. So here we have knight to e2 by Ding, uh, but now comes rook to b6 check, pushing the king back, king to e7, and now not going after the pawns, but an even better move, king to d3. 
uh, we have knight to c1 check, king to c4 now, uh, and here Ding still uh, desperately tries to bring the knight back into the game. We have knight to e1, but now it simply doesn't work. Feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning move for white here. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh. For those of you that were able to do it, uh, really congratulations, you are an excellent trapper of knights. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, here Navarra played rook to b1. And now it becomes obvious. The king and knight occupy the same uh, the same uh, line. Uh, here rook to e1 is the threat, you definitely want to trap that knight. And uh, there's no other way you can do it. You can't go knight c1, you can go knight c3, d4 is taken, f4 is taken, you cannot go to g1. Uh, you can give up a knight for a pawn, but that doesn't really do anything. And the only thing you could do uh, is a very interesting line is king to f8. And now after you go rook to e1, okay, you can go knight c1. The bishop is still controlling the c1 square. But here, f4, you block the bishop's defense. And again, the only square available for the knight is a2. And after a2, uh, now rook to a1 simply, uh, does, simply traps the knight. And here, whatever you play, it doesn't really matter. King e7, rook captures. And now it's an easily winning endgame for white, where still white is up a pawn. Uh, but black has a doubled f pawn. And with uh, being up the exchange, it's just an easy win for white. So here, after uh, rook to b1, uh, Ding Liren resigned the game. That's something you hear uh, very, very rarely. It's like you will hear uh, once a year, maybe, that Ding loses a game. It's, uh, you know, like, like a solar eclipse, only much, much rarer. Uh, but yeah, even even the great King Ding is able uh, of losing a game now and then, uh, which uh, is really amazing. He played the, he played the line that Navarro used uh, to beat uh, to beat Lubomir Vtachnik, and uh, then Navarro improved on it. Uh, and then uh, in a couple of positions, that Queen to C6 that the Ding missed, he had to go into the line where he is down the exchange. Uh, I have not seen the interview. Maybe he wanted to go into it, being down the exchange with the pass D pawn, and he saw that he will win the knight, but the rook was just too strong with the double left pawn. And then, uh, he, again, he couldn't save the knight, and then he decided to give up the E, the e pawn to save it, and, uh, well, that was just enough for Navarra. Navarra played a perfect game, which is, you know, th that's at least, you have to play at least a perfect game uh, to, be, to beat uh, King Ding, and that's what Navarra did. So quite, quite an outstanding game by, by Navarra. And it's interesting, yeah, Ding also had a couple of moments in the endgame where he could have gone back and maybe tried to hold a draw, but it seems that Ding was also trying to win this game, uh, which he has to, I mean, he's, he's over 2800, you don't just uh, stay there if you're drawing games where there's any fight left. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game, I do hope you enjoyed it, uh, tough, tough game for Ding, but uh, I, I don't think he'll take it too seriously, I'm sure he'll just, you know, improve and maybe lose the next game in 2022, who knows. Uh, we'll see. Maybe in the candidates this year. Uh, it's hard, hard to say. Uh, but I did prepare the standings after round five, so here it is. Magnus Carlsen still in first place with three and a half points, uh, followed by Vishwanathan Anand after his great victory. We've already seen it in the previous video, followed by Sergei Karakin also with three points. Uh, Ding now with two and a half uh, with in fourth place, then Navarra also with two and a half, Grishuk also two and a half, Timur Rajabov two and a half, and then with two points, Shahrir Mamedyarov and Veselin Topalov. Uh, and in last place, something you don't see very often, uh, Anish Giri, who uh, is without a win so far and already two losses, uh, definitely not his tournament. And he was so close to breaking 2800. I think he was like three points away, or, or maybe even one, one point, I'm not sure, but he was like really close to re-entering the 2800 club, so... Maybe he was uh, just too excited to join the club again, and you know it's it just it, it's just not his tournament. Uh, but uh, you know a lot of games still to play. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so yeah, once again, I would like to thank uh, Matt Plagans, uh, Michael Cabral, uh, Nishank Batiprolu, uh, William Miller, and Yoni Schlesinger for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully with some more interesting content. And yes, for those of you wondering, we are definitely continuing the Capablanca saga as soon as I, uh, you know, catch a break uh, when I will have at least a little bit more time uh, in my day to uh, to do the saga simultaneously with the current events in the world. Uh, but worry not, it will continue. Uh, so once again, thank you all. Uh, I'll see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.